the algebra of gaps in the S model, or learning how to count. We left on the note that our first minor primordial algebra is a property of the evolution of our current SM mixed with our next SM in the S model, and this lead to an efficient sieving algorithm using just-in-time memory allocation. Its pseudocode is our next set is our next prime numbers copies of gaps, thus expanding our current gap set to the next boundary, and removing the induced non-co-prime members. We also noted that, as each member dies during coalescence, it takes two gaps, the ones to the left and right of it. This creates a new gap, the sum of what is displaced. This new gap may be a sum of small gaps, which yields a value which already existed in the progenitor set or something altogether new. Think of this set as a distribution. The largest gap production mechanism is via expansion. Remember the amount undergoing coalescence is order 1 over our current prime, and only some of the new gaps evolved from coalescence are novel. So we can conclude, its large scale shape is long tail. That is the first few gap types produced, will always dominate the populations of sets of higher order primorials. To continue, we need to extract one more piece of structural information. When the prime is greater than 2, or its index is bigger than 1, all of the gap members, except the last gap, form a palindrome. That is, we have an internal symmetry among the gaps. Assuming m is bigger than 1, implying the current prime is greater than 2, we note the current primordial plus or minus 1, is in RSM, or its residuals. That is, the last gap of every such iteration, is a twin, we call the capping twin. Next, we note by construction, half of the primordial, plus, or minus 2, are both in SM, and since we can't have pairs of twins, it implies the existence of a gap of four, we call the pivotal cousin. Finally we note, since our current primordial, plus or minus any member, is a member of SM, or its residuals, we can compare gaps on either side of the pivotal cousin. A close look at the counting should satisfy you. The palindrome exists. To count gap evolution, it helps to imagine you are a gap in SM. The expansion phase is easy to understand. There will be the next prime numbers copies made, spaced exactly, our current primordial apart. To understand the effects of coalescence on the copies it helps to recall our set notation. Remember, the top row is a co-prime members, and the differences represent the second row, the gaps. This means each gap is actually two neighboring co-prime members. That is, since every column will be used once by the composite killing machine during coalescence, and the gap is actually two co-prime members, then it has two ways to die. So for each gap in an ESM, 
there will be r next prime minus 2 r second prime minus original copies survive intact in the next iteration of the model An identical argument exists for gap pairs and tuples up to length r next prime minus 2 the last one having a single copy surviving or said another way tuples of length n have n plus 1 ways to die by the composite killing machine In the next generation, we have the same argument, but now all other things being equal, we have even more copies, because the next next prime is even bigger, and so on. And this holds for all appropriate tuple lengths. That is we have gap counting machinery, based on the primordial minors. Leading by example, we begin with Z sub 1 equals S0, generating the singleton set of 1. Since first minor primordial is, by definition, 1, it trivially generates the positive integers via 1 plus n, and looks like the following. Note. The gaps are identically equal to 1, and tuples identically equal the length. But the next prime equals 2, so for each gap, we have 2 minus 2 equals 0, copies survive to Z sub 2, or S1. So this is the last we will see of gaps of unity or odd valued. This is the bootstrap. It disappears in defining future structures, because it is so degenerate, but without it, we would only ever have counting by one. Following our recipe, S1 equals 2 times S0's gap set, minus 2 times each member of S0. Notice the gaps are uniformly twins, and tuples are uniformly twice n. It's not as degenerate as S0, but it is still degenerate. All we've learned is, now all primes are odd-valued, or of the form 1, plus 2n. We also note, the second minor primordial copy and multiplication machinery is now active, and it is as simple as it gets. There is a single element in the set. Birth order luck gives our type count of twins in SM, the trivial second minor primordial. The next prime is 3, so 3 minus 2 equals 1, a single twin, will survive the composite killing machine. Because of this, we will always see plenty of twins, but never in pairs, past 7 as a prime number. Following our constructive recipe, we build S2, our current prime is 3, and the next prime is 5. Our current primordial is 6, and the first minor primordial is 2. Things stay very simple here for the last time. Now we have two gaps, each growing the same, because 3 minus 2 primordial equals 1. That is, at p equals 2, we defined the second minor primordial as 1, while now it is coincidentally 1. That is, our type count of cousins, at m, equals our type count of twins, equals our second minor primordial. 
since 3 minus 3 primordial equals 1. The third minor primordial machinery is now active. It drives pairs, and we have the trivial sets 4, 2, and 2, 4. Both pairs exist with equal frequency, because all future primes are now defined by two equations. Note, the superscript here is m equals 2, not the square. A member can be 1 plus 6n or 5 plus 6n. And our type counter term for either pair is the third minor primordial, a term. Building S3 with 5 primordial equals 30 is the last we can practically demonstrate in this format. But of course, the machinery follows perfectly. Note, the twin count equals the cousin count. Note the pairs of 4, 2, number the same as pairs of 2, 4. Note the palindrome in the gaps, 6, 4, 2, pivotal cousin, 2, 4, 6, and the capping twin. It rarely gets as beautiful as this. What we didn't say earlier is as soon as the pairs were created in S2, we also had gap spans of 6. Because the CKM targeted exactly one of each member of pairs in the previous set, we were guaranteed we would see their coalescence and the production of gaps of 6 or sexy gaps. Gaps of 2 and 4, as well as the pairs, can never form from coalescence after their birth. They are swept up only by the appropriate minor primordial machinery, in a pure form, and need only a single term, a single primordial minor, to describe them, with perhaps a constant of multiplication. We call them atomic. They were made or created, one time only and multiply only via expansion. Coalescence can only destroy them, never create them. But the thing is, the second minor primordial machinery acts on every gap in the set, not just twins and cousins. Because of this, once a gap exists, it will always exist, even gaps that are produced purely by coalescence. They all join the mix as it were. Since S3 has a pair of sexes, and P equals 5, and 5 minus 3 equals 2, each of subsets of the atomic pairs, we can trivially guess the six count rate. That is, the type count of sexes at M is twice the second minor primordial minus twice the third minor primordial. In fact, the count of all spans of six is the sum of always to sum to six, which is the count of sexes and the count of our atomic pairs, which all sum to twice our second minor primordial. Motivated by the primordial algebra we talked about earlier, we begin with a simple question in linear algebra. Given the counts, can we solve the simultaneous equations to find the constants of multiplication? And the answer is trivially, yes. This is easily generalized. 
and we will continue the discussion in the next module. For more information please see the next lectures, or Google, Multiplication Modulo N, along the primorials, with its differences, and variations applied, to the study of, the distributions of prime number gaps.